welcome all of you in Renuka Institute of NEET. Myself, Dr. Sushil Naik. Today, in biology lecture, we'll talk about biological classification in which five kingdom system of classification. R.H. Whitaker was the scientist who classified living organism in five different kingdom in which living organisms are classified as monera, protista, fungi, plants or plantae and animalia or animal kingdom. Whittaker was the first who classified fungi differently from all other kingdom. This system of classification is based on phylogenetic classification. In fact, it gives information regarding the evolution of the living organism and it gives information regarding interrelationship between the organisms and that's why it is called phylogenetic interrelationship. Phylo word denote for the plant. Phylogenetic it gives information regarding the genetical evolution of the living organism as well and that's why it is a phylogenetic system of classification. Whittaker gave some criteria. If we talk about the monera, they are prokaryotic organisms, but all other organisms except the monera are eukaryotic organisms. We know very well, prokaryotic organism having primitive kind of nucleus varies. In the eukaryotic organism, well developed nucleus is found, it means it has nuclear membrane. Second characteristic of the five kingdom system based on the cell wall. We know very well in the case of monera, the cell wall is formed of poly saccharides plus some amino acid. In fact, we can say there is no cellulose in the cell wall constitution, but it is formed of peptidoglycans. Simply, it is polysaccharide and some amino acids are present in the cell wall of monarian organisms. If we talk about cell wall in the protista, as protista include unicellular plants and unicellular animals. If we talk about unicellular animal, there is no cell wall and that's why we have mentioned here in some protista having the cell wall which are unicellular aquatic plants. In the case of fungi, fungal cell wall is formed of fungal cellulose that is formed of chitin. Students remember that chitin is a kind of homopolysaccharide and it is found in the constitution of cell wall of the fungi. This chitin is also found in some arthropod animals. But the difference is that in the case of fungal cell wall, chitin is a soft structure. But in the case of arthropoda animals, the chitin having calcium salt. So comparatively, in the case of animal, it is tough. In the case of plant, the cell wall is formed of cellulose. Cellulose, cell wall is present in the case of plant. In the case of animal, there is no cell wall that we know very well. Third criteria we can take is the nuclear membrane. As I explained earlier, in the case of Monera, nuclear membrane is absent. But all other organisms like protista, fungi, plant and animal as they are eukaryotic, nuclear membrane is always present. The next criteria is the body organization. If we look at the monera, organisms are unicellular. So it is cellular kind of organization is found. In the case of protista again, all unicellular organisms are included. So again, we can say that is a cellular organization is found. In the case of fungi, body organization is a multicellular. But remember that exceptionally, yeast is a unicellular fungi. So in the case of yeast, the body organization is a cellular again. In the case of plant, tissue, 
and organs are found whereas in the case of animal tissue organ and organ system is also found in the case of animal the last criteria if we talk is the mode of nutrition if we talk about monoran organisms their mode of nutrition is autotrophic or that is heterotrophic remember that if we talk about such monera having chlorophyll like substance simply example blue green algae they are autotrophic in mode of nutrition they are photosynthetic some photosynthetic bacteria are also found which are called chemosynthetic bacteria and again chemosynthetic nutrition is also kind of autotrophic nutrition but some bacteria are parasitic they live in the body of other organism and so the nutrition is a parasitic and some bacteria are saprophytic as well they act as a decomposer in the ecosystem if we talk about protista again they are autotrophic or heterotrophic in their mode of nutrition as again protistian plants unicellular plants are autotrophic in mode of nutrition and unicellular animals which we say protozoans also included in protista and they are heterotrophic in mode of nutrition fungi is always heterotrophic as fungi is saprophytic or parasitic in its mode of nutrition it get a nutrition from the decaying organic matter and that's why it is a saprophytic or in some cases fungi get nutrition from the other organism mainly plants and that's why it is a parasitic as well in the case of plants all plants are autotrophic in mode of nutrition whereas animals are always heterotrophic in mode of nutrition but in the case of animals we do use the word holozoic mode of nutrition students remember that holozoic is nothing but animal like ingestion of food that is called holozoic mode of nutrition for example if we talk about amoeba it angles the food particles with the help of its pseudopodia so it engulfment process is a phagocytic process but nutrition is called holozoic the similar in the case of human we inject the food particles we intake it in our buccal cavity so it is again a kind of ingestion of food and mode of nutrition is a holozoic so in the case of vertical system of classification the different criteria are taken into the consideration before classifying the living organisms mainly he talked about all this characteristic but in addition to that we can say the thallus structure is also taken into consideration the phylogenetic relationship of the organisms is also taken into consideration in this system of classification thank you okay beta clear